There have been four ships in British service to carry the name Queen Mary. Most recently, in 2004, Queen Mary II entered service as the flagship of the Cunard Line. She was the namesake of RMS Queen Mary, which first sailed the Atlantic in 1936 for the Cunard White Star Line. Turbine steamer TS Queen Mary was launched in 1933, and she operated on the River Clyde for Williamson Buchanan steamers. But the first Queen Mary was HMS Queen Mary, a battlecruiser in a class of her own, and the last battlecruiser to be built for the Royal Navy before the outbreak of the First World War. She had a short and dramatic life with a disastrous demise at sea off the coast of Jutland. In the early days of 1911, the British government placed an order for a new class of battleships as part of the 1910-1911 naval programme. These battleships were HMS King George V, Centurion, Ajax and Audacious, making up the King George V class of battleships. As was the way of things, along with these ships only one battlecruiser would be ordered per naval programme, and so an order was placed for a ship that would become battlecruiser HMS Queen Mary. Her armour protection and secondary armaments were distributed somewhat differently to the Lion class that came before her, but also the position of her officer's quarters. In 1905, with the construction of HMS Dreadnought, it was decided that the officer's quarters would be much better situated amidships, closer to their action stations. Following much complaint and persuasion, the design of Queen Mary repositioned the officer's quarters back to the more traditional stern. This would allow Queen Mary to be the first battlecruiser to feature a stern walk, a private balcony usually reserved for the highest ranking officer on board. As she was to be built alongside her battleship sisters of the King George V class, it was fitting that she would be named for Mary of Teck, the wife of King George V. Her keel was laid down on March 6, 1911 at Palmer's Shipbuilding and Iron Company, Jarrow on the River Tyne, the same yard that built battleship HMS Lord Nelson five years earlier. She was launched on March 20th, 1912, and following fitting out, she was completed in August of 1913, at a cost of £2,078,491, the equivalent of £241.5 million today. Compared to her predecessors of the Lion-class ships, she was slightly larger. She had a length of 700 feet, a beam of 89 feet, and a draft of 32 feet 4 inches. At full load, she had a maximum displacement of 32,160 tonnes and would normally carry a crew of 997 officers and ratings, and this increased to 1,275 at the outbreak of war. Powered by two paired sets of Parsons direct drive steam turbines, she just met her design speed of 28 knots when undergoing sea trials in May and June of 1913. Her maximum range was 5,610 nautical miles, or 10,390 kilometres, at a speed of 10 knots, which is 19 kilometres per hour. Her primary armament consisted of four twin hydraulically powered turrets, positioned bow to stern and designated A, B, Q and X, and fitted with 13.5 inch Mark V guns. These guns had been introduced in 1912 as the main armament for the new Super Dreadnought battleships of the Orion class, namely HMS Orion, Monarch, Conqueror and Thunderer. Along with this primary armament, she had a secondary armament of 16 4-inch Mark VII guns mounted in casemates on the forecastle deck. At the time of her construction, she was not fitted with any anti-aircraft guns, however, in October 1914, two guns were fitted, a 6-pounder Hotchkiss gun along with a 3-inch 20 weight gun. Completing her armaments were a pair of 21-inch submerged torpedo tubes, one on each side of the hull. On the 1st of July 1913, HMS Queen Mary came under the command of Captain Reginald Hall, and following her commissioning into service on the 4th of September 1913, she was assigned to the 1st Battlecruiser Squadron, which was under the command of Rear Admiral David Beatty. On the 28th of August 1914, HMS Queen Mary would see her first action of the war in the Battle of Heligoland Bight. As part of Beatty's battlecruiser force, she had been detailed to provide distant support to the British cruisers and destroyers which were operating closer to the German coastline in the Jade Estuary. She was to provide cover in the event that the German high seas fleet sailed out to engage the British attacking ships. 
the light cruiser HMS Arethusa came under fire from the German light cruisers SMS Strasbourg and SMS Köln, resulting in Beatty ordering his battlecruisers to come to Arethusa's assistance. At 12.37, the first battlecruiser emerged from the mist, sending SMS Strasbourg looking for cover in the mist. SMS Köln was not so fortunate and remained in the open, and was immediately attacked, resulting in her becoming crippled. Beatty was about to finish off Köln when SMS Ariadne emerged directly in front. Turning his attention to the veteran light cruiser, he fired three salvos at a range of 6,000 yards, 5.5 kilometers, scoring direct hits and setting her ablaze. Ariadne was able to limp away from the battle, but later sank, despite efforts from other German ships having rescued some of her crew to tow her to safety. 30 minutes after it began, Rear Admiral Beatty ordered his ships north and to retire, but not before the main body of the squadron came across the crippled SMS Köln. HMS Lion delivered two salvos, and that was the end of SMS Köln. On October the 13th, 1914, HMS Queen Mary was under the command of Captain Cecil Irby Prowse, and still operating under Rear Admiral Beatty's first battlecruiser squadron. At this point in the war, the Imperial German Navy had devised a strategy to draw out the Royal Navy into the North Sea to engage and destroy them. The plan involved sending fast battlecruisers with rear protection from the High Seas Fleet, which were positioned east of Dogger Bank, to bombard British coastal towns. On the 3rd of November 1914, a bombardment of Great Yarmouth had proved to be reasonably successful, and so a larger operation was drawn up by Admiral Franz von Hipper. The targets for bombardment were the English coastal towns of Hartlepool, Whitby and Scarborough. On the 15th of December 1914, the German fleet sailed west for the English coast. But what Franz von Hipper didn't realise was that the British had been reading the German naval codes and were waiting to intercept them on their journey across the North Sea. But what the British didn't realise was that the High Seas fleet was also present just to the east of Dogger Bank. The British fleet was split into two groups. The first battlecruiser squadron, including HMS Queen Mary and commanded by Rear Admiral Beatty, and the second battle squadron commanded by Vice Admiral Sir George Warrender, who also took overall command of the British force. By 0515, British destroyers that were escorting Queen Mary and the rest of the battlecruiser squadron had come into contact with German destroyers of the High Seas Fleet, and a battle had commenced. Vice Admiral Warrender had been signalled that destroyer HMS Lynx was engaging the enemy, but this information was not relayed to Rear Admiral Beatty. Destroyer HMS Shark and battlecruiser HMS New Zealand had also spotted armoured cruiser SMS Rune and signalled to Vice Admiral Warrender. But again, despite HMS New Zealand being tasked to relay messages on, Beatty was not informed. This breakdown in communication meant that it would be 0900 before Beatty finally got a message that Scarborough was being shelled. He reformed his squadron and immediately turned west and headed for Scarborough. But the shallow waters at the southeast of Dogger Bank meant that the British ships had to split, Beatty to the north and Warrender to the south. This left a gap of 15 nautical miles, or 28 kilometres, between them, which the German light forces exploited to their advantage and made good their escape. The coastal bombardments had caused hundreds of civilian casualties, and public outrage was directed at the German Navy for the attack, but also to the Royal Navy, for not doing a better job in preventing it. Queen Mary's final action took place on May the 31st, 1916. Decoded German radio messages had revealed that the German High Seas fleet would be sailing out of the Jade Bight and into the North Sea in the waters off Jutland. This provided an ideal opportunity for the Royal Navy to lie in wait and intercept them. Beatty's 1st Battlecruiser Squadron, with support from battleships of the 5th Battle Squadron, caught sight of the German fleet at 3.48 in the afternoon, and opened fire. Queen Mary turned her attention on battlecruiser SMS Seedlitz, firing with her forward turrets and scoring two hits, disabling one of Seedlitz's aft turrets. The distance between the opposing forces was beginning to grow, making firing less accurate, so Beatty altered course to try and close the range. The two lead ships, HMS Lion and HMS Princess Royal, were now exposed because of this manoeuvre, and Lion came under immediate fire from battlecruiser SMS Der Flinger, suffering several hits. 
The resultant smoke from the damaged HMS Lion obscured her and nearby Princess Royal from further salvos, so De Flinger switched her attention to Queen Mary, who was still exchanging fire with SMS Seedlitz. As De Flinger honed her sights, Queen Mary was hit twice. The first shell struck the forward part of the ship and detonated at least one, possibly two, of her forward magazines. The huge explosion broke the ship in two near the foremast. The second shell struck aft, possibly in the area of Q turret, and as the aft section began to roll over and sink, a further explosion, possibly from shells breaking loose, ripped through the hull. The HMS Queen Mary had 1,266 men on board. Only 20 were rescued. The wreck of Queen Mary was discovered in 1991 and lies in three pieces on the sea floor at a depth of 187 feet or 57 meters. Examination of the wreck suggests that the initial explosion was not in the magazines of A or B turrets, but rather in the magazine of the 4-inch battery. The explosion in the smaller magazine was deemed to be sufficient to cause the ship to break in two as well as causing explosions in the other forward magazines, resulting in the catastrophic damage to the forward section. Like many other Battle of Jutland wrecks, she has been declared a protected place following the Protection of Military Remains Act of 1986.